Very interested in the backstory of what we've been talking about. This story that ESPN's Andrea Adelson pinned over the weekend, where I guess nothing's really pinned anymore. It's typed. It's put online. You get what I'm saying. Jim Phillips, ACC to meet about changing men's hoop narrative. It's something we saw from over the weekend and joining us from Greenville, South Carolina, where there's still an NCAA Elite Eight game to be played a little bit later on tonight. It is Andrea Adelson joining us on WSJS. So interested in the backstory here. This came up on Saturday, your story. How did the conversation take place with you and the commissioner? Well, thanks for having me, Josh. Uh, I'm here in Greenville, obviously. And, uh, Miami women had just won their Sweet 16 game, and the men had just won their Sweet 16 game. And Jim Phillips was in Greenville to watch Notre Dame play uh, in their Sweet 16 game uh, against Maryland. And I saw him on the court, and I was uh, assigned to do a story on Miami, basically making it into the Elite Eight with both their men's and women's teams. And that was the premise of my entry with Jim Phillips, you know, the pride, the ACC feels in having two teams make it. And then, of course, the follow-up to that naturally is, well, how much more pride is it that this has happened again for the men, considering the number of bids for a second year in a row? And that kind of opened the door for him to say what he said about the ACC needing to do a better job, be more proactive uh, about changing the narrative about this conference. Because, as you know, this has been a great frustration, not just for Jim Phillips and the basketball coaches, but for anybody who watches the ACC in terms of the fact that they've only had five bids each the last two years, and yet they've still seen teams advance to the final four. And I got several texts after that story posted saying, well, it's about time that the ACC is going to do something to address this. And, oh, by the way, maybe they should have done this last year because if they had done it last year, perhaps it changes what happened this year. Nonetheless, uh, folks are excited that the ACC is going to sit down and meet about this because very clearly there is some sort of breakdown in communication with that selection committee when they're looking at the metrics, the numbers, the net, the eye test, whatever you want to call it, and how many teams they believe the ACC deserves to get into a tournament. And uh, obviously Jim Phillips and, and the league wants to change that. Yes, this is something I said on this show a month ago, and I was pretty forceful about it, and it's something that coaches had communicated to me, a lot of them, head coaches, assistant coaches, that – we need somebody who's going to be an advocate for us in an aggressive public way. Jeff Cable saying it should be the ACC network's responsibility. Well, why not the commissioner? And I do think it's val there's value to doing this in a public way. Like Greg Sankey, he was public when Texas A&M got left out last year. And guess what? The SEC got more bids the following season. And we talk about the value of campaigning in the Heisman context with Sam Hartman in the fall. I think there's value to doing this publicly. It's something we talked about with Jim Phillips in Greensboro at the ACC tournament a few weeks ago, and he was telling us about all the things he was doing privately. What, what do you think the value is now of him going publicly, talking to you about his displeasure with what's happened in terms of the bids and what he would like to see moving forward? Yeah, I think this is, I don't want to say throwing down the gauntlet because that sounds very drastic, but I do hope that this signals a, a change in the way the ACC has approached not just basketball, but football as well in terms of trying to be out there more aggressively uh, discussing the merits of the teams within the conference. Because as you mentioned, we've seen Greg Sankey do this in multiple sports. We saw Nick Saban go out there and campaign for his team with two losses uh, last year in the college football playoff, right? And to me, it's always felt like the ACC has just been a little bit more passive than they should be when we're talking about playoff and or tournament bids on the line. And so maybe this is a lesson learned after going through this now for a second straight season on the basketball side. And as much as the ACC wants to be a football conference, we all know how important basketball is, but obviously the history and the tradition of the ACC and only get five bids in for two years in a row. I mean, this is a low point 
for the ACC when it comes to overall number of bids, despite having expanded conference. So I do think that this is probably something where those inside the league feel this cannot stand and we can't just take a back seat and let other people tell the narrative for us. We need to do a better job of selling that narrative for ourselves because people can sit here and say, well, yeah, it was a down year and they beat each other up. But the fact remains, the ACC has been terrific in the postseason these last two years. And shouldn't that count for something? Shouldn't that matter? Shouldn't that be held to a standard that maybe non-conference games should not be held to? And his biggest thing, honestly, is the net. And he mentioned, why are they not looking more at the way teams are playing? Why are they not looking more at the eye test? Instead, they're relying on this net metric that ends up having Pitt have to go to a first four game uh, and win that instead of just making the tournament. I think they should have made it based on their merit alone, and obviously Clemson should have as well. I, I don't know that I agree that North Carolina should have made it the way that Jim Phillips thinks, but nonetheless, this, this conference should have had at least six bids, and I just feel like it's a wake-up call, and now that they can use once again the tournament performance as a feather in their cap, they have to figure out different ways to be able to promote the conference so that the narrative changes. Andrea Adelson joining us from ESPN Reader Story with quotes from Jim Phillips from over the weekend. You know the Canes about as well as anybody, so I'm sure you saw John Swafford's big picture from 20 years ago that it would be <laughs> the Canes in basketball that are saving the conference and holding down the fort. But big picture speaking, Andrea, how will Miami's run, given the way they built their roster last summer, change the way ACC teams approach this offseason? Well, I mean, we already heard what Jim Beheim said a few months ago about that, right? And when you just look at the impact NIL alone has made on that basketball roster with bringing in Nigel Pack and the job that he's done and their NIL mega booster, John Ruiz, um, making sure that the rest of the team was taken care of, that obviously had a direct result on Miami going from Elite Eight to Final Four, because Nigel Pack was not on this roster uh, a year ago. The vast majority of the guys were, but not him. And he's obviously been a huge difference maker. And, and I think that when you just look at the effect of the portal and NIL, and you can say this on the women's side as well, For sure. because Miami also had several key impact transfers, the Cavender twins, right, who got NIL deals as well that have helped them, that – I think it's probably going to be easier than ever. And I hesitate to use the word easy because it's never easy to win. It's never easy to build a roster. But based on the comments I've heard, at least from basketball coaches over the last week and covering Sweet 16 and Elite Eight, you can remake your roster a whole lot faster now in this transfer portal NIL era than you've ever been able to do before. And I think Miami is certainly an, is an example of that. Um, and LSU on the women's side is certainly uh, an example of that in getting to the final four. So I do think that uh, it'll have an impact, but I also don't necessarily know that coaches need to look at Miami and say, wow, look at the effect of the portal and NIL. I think coaches are probably already there already. And it's just a matter of how do we do this ourselves? How do we make sure that we're taking – best advantage of what is available to us with, with the portal and NIL now. One more thing for Andrea Adelson. Since you cover college football so closely and the Carolina Panthers have the number one pick, do you have a preference between Bryce Young at Alabama and C.J. Stroud at Ohio State? Well, you, oh, I thought you were going to say Anthony Richardson. Is, is oh, Anthony Richardson please. not even in the conversation? No. You, see, this is the difference between pro guy Pro, pro scout or pro <laughs> reporter and people that actually watch college football like you and I, he lost to Vanderbilt, Andrea. He lost to uh -huh. Vanderbilt. If you lose to yeah. Vanderbilt, I don't want to hear anything about you being the number one pick in the draft, especially if you only played one year. So really, I'm limiting it to those two guys. Okay, that's fine. But pro scouts are definitely considering him as a number one pick. I think we can, whether he deserves it or not, because of all of his physical tools, 
I think he's going to get consideration. Now, if we're just going between Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud, yeah. I don't even know how this is a question. Uh, it should be Bryce Young. I don't care what his size is. Uh, to me, he has been the most outstanding quarterback in college football for two years straight. And I know Caleb Williams won the Heisman Trophy last year, but I thought Bryce Young had an even better year last year than the year he won the Heisman because he didn't have the talent around him that he did in 2021. He is accurate. He's smart. He knows what he's doing with the football. Yeah, he might not be 6'4". He might not be able to run like C.J. Stroud. But to me, he's a guy that I want to build my football team around because he's got that intangible it factor. He knows what to do to win games. He knows how to make players around him better. Uh, And so I don't think this should be a question. I think it should be Bryce Young all the way. You're the best, Andrea. Great work over the weekend. Best of luck in Greenville. And hopefully I'll see you again sometime soon. That'd be great, Josh. Thanks for having me.